Are you struggling to know how to acquire customers without a marketing budget? This is a challenge, and in today's episode, we're going to meet an entrepreneur and map out how she can find free leads. We will make Boston work. As we go through it, I know you're going to hear ideas for how you can find your leads as well. I'm Amy Walker, your sales doc, and I'm a small business strategist. I have helped hundreds of entrepreneurs solve their sales woes in order to be able to grow to six figures and even seven figures in their business. And I know that you can do it too. Do you think she can handle it? No, I can handle it. Today we're talking with Crystal Partney from Owl and & Thistle and Scattering Hope. She is getting her businesses up and launched and like many new entrepreneurs and maybe like you, She's struggling with marketing budget and knowing where to spend your money, where to not spend your money. How do you find leads consistently that are good, high quality, ready to buy from you without having huge budget? So today we're going through the four critical questions that you need to ask yourself as you're developing your strategy to get free leads. Crystal, thank you so much for being on with me today. I'm excited to kind of diagnose your sales challenges and give you a little bit of a prescription here. So um, what's, your, what's your biggest challenge with your sales right now? Well, first off, let me say thank you, Amy, for having me. I'm just so thrilled that you would answer my question. The, the question that I have is, how do you get leads when you don't have a marketing budget? Or a very slim marketing budget? Yeah, yeah, this is a really good question, and it's one that so many entrepreneurs have because, you know, a lot of times as small business owners, it's not like you have a money tree that you can just do everything that you want for marketing. And you get presented so many cool marketing opportunities as like, well, where do I actually spend? So Crystal, let's just get a little bit of basics on who your ideal client is. Um, so let's start there and then we can start going over ideas. Okay, so I am the founder and CEO of two companies. The first one is called Scattering Hope and the sister company to Scattering Hope is called Owl and Thistle. So owl as in the bird. <laughs> and they really complement each other like sisters is why I keep using the word sister. But the first company that I mentioned, Scattering Hope, helps someone after they have lost a loved one to suicide. And then in the sister company to Al and Thistle focuses on suicide prevention. So as you can imagine, they complement each other very well. And it's just a beautiful energy between the two. Okay. So is the client for suicide prevention, do you see the client being like schools? Potentially, yes. What types of services are you offering? Is it support groups? Is it mentoring, masterminds? What do you see that looking like? Yeah, so I have a variety of things that I'm, I'm working on. I have a subscription box for both companies, and as well as I'm going to eventually be offering coaching and mentorship and offering courses that are in a variety of topics that go hand in hand with both companies. Okay. Well, I think I've got like your diagnostics here. So now let's kind of go over the diagnosis. So the very first thing that we always do when we're trying to figure out any marketing campaign, whether it's paid or whether you're trying to do organic, um, we are going to first look at where are your clients? Um, so the clients who have lost a loved one to suicide, let's talk about where they are already gathered. Um, hospital caseworkers, uh, counselors, mortuaries, Facebook support groups. They are also gathered through a, I want to call it like a web of like-minded grief. So, you know, they're, they know people who have been through similar things and that life experience referral network will be a big thing because everybody knows somebody and they, they create a bond that they wish they never had, but they're at the same time they need and they're grateful to have. So that's where your clients are. Um, on the suicide prevention side, um, definitely the schools are focused on this. And the sad but true thing is that, well, they're also gathered with uh, counselors and therapists. Um, the, the sad part is that there's not a lot of support for adults who are considering suicide. It's almost treated like it's a teenage problem um, when it's not. So that's what I would be looking at is who actually already has gathered your clients. That's step number one. So step number two is figuring out how do we want to create collaborations with these organizations that have already gathered our clients. So um, for example, 
you could reach out to schools. And it, when you're going the path of selling to schools, it's really important to connect with somebody who is already inside of that environment that understands how money was earmarked. Because schools do have money. Everyone always says schools don't have money. Not true, they do have money, but their money all comes earmarked for certain things. So when you know way, the way that they receive their funds and you can go and present yourself as somebody who can provide for those funds, then that's a way that you can get into the schools. Um, but I always look for collaboration. So for example, uh, could you go to, when, when someone passes away through suicide and their family is meeting with the caseworker, could you be a resource that they include in your flyer in their resource folders? Um, and I don't know the answer to this. I'm just brainstorming, trying to get you thinking through. Um, with counselors, um, could you be, you know, they, they do the group counseling, but could you be a positive community that could involve, you know, that could create an opportunity for them to just go out and um, socialize? When you connect with those counselors, what do you bring to the table that's different from what they do and also beneficial to the clients? Um, with mortuaries, again, that might be just being like a, a resource that when someone comes through and they're planning the funeral of someone who has died from suicide, that they can, they can say, you know, I know this is a really hard time. Um, here's some resources that we have found are really helpful for families who have been through something similar. And they include your book, for example. You could gift them your book. She has a book, guys. She didn't say it, but I'm saying. <laughs> um, so that could be something that you could do that they, you know, you could give that book as a, as a gift and then that could be a lead in to be able to connect with these people. Um, with uh, support groups, I think it's a matter of either creating one when it doesn't exist or joining and being a regular contributor inside of those groups. Now, we are gonna look for collaborations, but the third thing that we need to do is we need to look through the path to sale. So let's talk about what that looks like. The collaboration gets you in front of the people the path to sale is how do we now get them to come and become a lead of ours. So if someone passes a full, like a flyer out, that doesn't mean that you have a lead. Does that make sense? Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. So how, what do we put on the flyer that makes them opt in and now they've come to be a lead inside of our system? So that's where you're going to think through what does that strategy look like? Um, I have a strategy that I'm not saying this is right for you, but my sales book, I was just looking at my report on Amazon and I have sold abysmally low numbers of, of that book. Like it's ridiculously bad on Amazon. But I have had hundreds of people go through my funnel where I give away the book for free and I have closed a lot of sales because of leads that came in through that book, which is what I really wanted to do. I really wanted clients, not just book sales. So that could be a funnel that you could use where you could have you know a picture of the book and come get this book as a free resource for your healing. And then they go and opt in and they get the book and now you have them in your connection pool. And so that could be an option or it could be something entirely different. But people don't just magically hear about you and then decide that they're going to buy from you. You need to have a, a transition period. I do recommend for you, Crystal, having a Facebook group and a Facebook community. Do you have one already? I do, I do, it's, it's growing. Um but I do, yeah. The reason why is because I've been through loss of a loved one, not through suicide, but through, you know, close personal loved one. And I'll tell you, I'm not one that's ready to talk to anyone about my grief in the beginning. It takes me a while and I have to also have trust with that person. So I think the group is really important for you because they can come in wherever they're at, get a chance to hear from you regularly, get a chance to feel the vibe of what you're putting together, and then they can decide that they trust you. But here's the real important part. You can run that group and have it just turn into the world's biggest charity. You have to have a sales strategy within the group. I think groups are a great sales strategy, but you have to have a transition plan. So for example, you could do live streams and you could in the live streams see who all engages and then after your live, go back and send all those people personal messages. And I love the voice memos. And you can just send them a voice memo that says, hey, thanks so much for being on today. I saw your comment about this and I wanted to check in and see how you're doing and how I can support you. And then ask a question that requ requires them to respond back. And then from there, you can say, I'd love to talk about this more and you can get them onto a call. Now, I can almost hear in my mind some of the people watching this being like, but aren't you capitalizing on people's grief? Do you ever get that thought? 
Oh, all the time. Okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> here's here's the thing. Um, you are helping people fill a need that they desperately have while they're in grief. And you're going to find and figure out through testing when are people ready for you? Because in the beginning, all they're ready for is the free community, right? They just need a supportive place where people understand what they're going through. And then they go through a phase where they're like really ready to be proactive about their healing and they're looking for answers. That's your client. So you're going to create certain things that will help you find where that person is. And then you let everybody else stay in the nice, warm, fuzzy, cozy place until they're really ready to, to do, take active control over their healing. That's who your client is. The rest of them, you're there to serve. And so you're not capitalizing off of people's grief. You're not using predatory practices because you're letting people matriculate. And then when they're ready, then you have programs for when you're in this space, but they're not they don't have to go in. It's not like you're going to pitch people the minute they come into the group. You're going to actually get to know them. You're going to build relationships. And you, I just, what I know of you, Crystal, you have such a good heart. Like I'm not worried about you taking advantage of people in their grief at all. So I don't want you to worry about that either. Does that make sense? Yes. Oh, thank you. I'm so glad that you said that. (laughs) Well, thank you so much for being here with us. Of course. My pleasure. I care about the health of your sales. So today I am prescribing two different things to help you in your business. Number one, go check out my video, Do I Need High Pressure Sales Tactics? And feel free to binge the playlist because there's a lot of great content in here. And second, I would love to offer you my sales and marketing GPS where we will take your sales temperature and gather those marketing vitals in order to see what's really going on. And then we will prescribe for you a customized improvement plan so you will know exactly what to do next. We'll even consult with you on it and answer the questions that you have. So go grab that now.